Are you as naive as I used to be, believing that hard work, your skills and knowledge is going to get you that promotion? Well, I've been there. Yeah, I know the feeling. But then I realized that meritocracy doesn't exist, especially in large corporations. That's what we are going to talk about today because I'm just preparing for a mentoring workshop for an organization and I thought, why don't I bring it to you guys? Because it's such an important topic and I wish somebody had taught me early in my career because trust me, I stayed behind because I didn't have a mentor or a sponsor. I didn't have somebody who would open the door for me. I didn't have somebody who would speak for me in the room where I wasn't there. Because I believe that, you know what, all I have to do is show them how hard I can work, how good I am, how smart I am, how, you know, my level of performance, and that will do the job. Mistake. And this is what we are going to talk about today. And, and I, it, it is really an important topic. And we're going to start by tidying up coach, mentor, sponsor. We're going to use these three words today. And we're going to start with coach versus mentor. And I don't want to spend a lot of time on it. It's not an interesting topic. Um, but before that, hit the subscribe button so we can help others and we can help leaders in HR to create better work environment and ex employee experiences because this is what I do. And I want every employee on this, in this planet to have better experiences at work. So coaching versus mentoring. Coach, anybody could be a coach, doesn't have to be related to your field of work. And it's a very generic, the coach will ask you questions, probe your brain, your think, the way, your way of thinking, what you believe, how you conduct yourself is very, very generic. Now, mentor, on the other hand, is always um, field related, industry re related or role related. So sometimes you would see two CEOs are mentoring each other. It's fantastic. So I'm going to give you a little bit of uh, backstage um, secret. So you would find an FMCG CEO mentoring a hospitality CEO. Both of them are in a leadership role, not much to do with what they do. I mean, CEOs are doing, you know, similar things, but this particular person is struggling with leadership, some part, areas of leadership. So the FMCG CEO is mentoring him. And why you need and why we benefit from mentoring is it has so many different areas why you need it and why we benefit because first of all your mentor role is to challenge you to question you to 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 help you um within your areas of work so this is where it somebody with the, in a more senior role within the same area of of your work or industry who knows your job can help you and that person so mentorship is very practical right hey i have a problem with this can you please help me and that person is going to teach you that person mentor is going to challenge you that that person is going to make sure that he or she and that's very important for mentors doesn't build dependency so it's guiding you through your job but you don't actually develop dependency and get to the point where you can't do your job without that person and i have seen it a hr director spending six hours a day on the phone with other HR people, helping, asking for help, how to do certain things. And I was like, how is the person still in this job? Like nobody sees this. And yeah, nobody sees that. Meritocracy doesn't work. <laughs> um, but um, so it's a very, very practical approach if you want to have your skills and competencies develop because that mentorship is extremely good in filling the gap what the traditional L&D structure leaves behind because they, the, the traditional, you know, development programs, training programs, organization have doesn't, don't cover everything. And this is where a mentor comes into the, the, into the picture with specific skills and knowledge and expertise within your areas of, of work. So I, um, so that's, that's what, you know, mentor is. And we're going to talk about how to select your mentor 
And what is the really interesting part and what you need to um, ask for. So I would like you guys to go and find here on YouTube, Carla Harris's TED Talk. And she talks about sponsorship. And I love the woman, I, lo I agree with everything she says, but I disagree with the word of sponsorship and not mentor. I mean, she says it's not mentor who is going to get you that job, but a sponsor. I kind of disagree and I will disagree on the grounds on what she's saying. Um, so your mentor is really going to develop you, is going to, you know, uh, bring you up. Um, and your mentor should also open doors for you. In Carla Harris's video, she, always, uh, she asked, who is speaking up for you or who is speaking for you in the room where you are not? Who is opening the doors? Who is recommending you when they see a job is coming up or somebody is talking and overhearing that, hey, we, we are looking for particular skills. So that's your mentor should be. She says sponsor, but I disagree with it because this is what she says, and I agree, how to find your mentor. And I always said it even before, that don't find somebody you like. That's not the purpose of a mentor. A mentor, uh, the purpose of a mentor is somebody who can help you to get better in your job and to progress further in your career. Now, that person is most of the time is a more senior person, and you need to find, based on her, three characteristics that she identified. Somebody who has the seat at the table, where the decision is being made about promotions, moving, etc., etc. The second one, and this is where I say you need to have your mentor fulfilling that role, because what she says is the person has to, must have exposure to your skills, knowledge, competence, your expertise and your experiences. And in order to be confident enough to recommend you and push you through that door, open that door for you and really push you into your next job. But who is more capable of doing that or who has the biggest chance of having such an exposure into your capabilities if it's not your mentor? So that's why I'm saying it has to be your mentor because your mentor has been walking with you for a year, you know, two years, couple of years, so he or she knows everything about you in terms of your performance. And the third characteristics is the person, your mentor, your sponsor, whoever is going to push you up, it has to have the power to make that decision. Because if there is no power, just going to, oh yeah, there is Sylvia, she's really good, but there is no power in that, right? So these kind, these three characteristics. So the first one is seat at the table where they, the, the voice of his or her is being heard. Yes, Sylvia is fantastic. I would recommend her. Exposure, second one is exposure to your skills. So the person can be confidently say, can confidently say that yes, she's fantastic and she can do this job. And the third one is making, is having the power to make that decision or influence that decision. If your mentor don't have these three plus the technical expertise within the field not much of a it's just going to be a developmental but not promotional right so you need to be very smart when you are selecting these people and because what she says and i really resonate it re resonated with me that there are two types of currencies relationship performance and relationship so early in your career, your performance, your hard work will promote you until mid-managerial level. You don't need these relationships because people see you. This is why we always complain about managers. Just because somebody can do a fantastic job doesn't make them a manager. But they do. But it does. <laughs> until the managerial role, it does. But from then onwards, you need relationships. So you need that mentor and you need, uh, need the sponsor. And ideally, that mentor is taking on that sponsor role as well, pushing you up on, the, on that career ladder, opening the door for you, speaking on behalf of you, speaking for you, that yes, she can do it. So when you are looking for um, 
of sending the courier letter and you don't have a mentor who is also having this sponsor role, you're not going to go far. And that's the truth, unfortunately. So look for someone, not somebody who you like, but somebody who can help you be very intentional and calculative, calculated about it. It's not even a word. Um, because I tell you, this was my second biggest mistake during my 19 years corporate career after the first one of staying with one company for 16 and a half years. And if I could go back, I never have regrets in my life, but I don't regret it. It worked out as it worked out, but I would change it. I would find that one person because you will find, and don't mistaken the mentor or sponsor with somebody who is just helping you with your career, get you better. So that's the developmental part of the mentorship, right? But not opening doors for you, not pushing you up. You need to find an, a person who do both or you have your mentor for, for development um, within your job to get better. And then, but you need to find a sponsor. But that, will that sponsor have, be confident enough about your capabilities to push you? So that's why the two has to be together, or must be together. Because especially when you get to senior roles, these guys, even if they have the voice, the seat at the table, even if they have the power, but if they don't, if, if they are not confident about you, they are not going to risk their reputation recommending you. So they're just going to go, yeah, she's, you know, she's good. But that will not be very convincing. So that's what I wanted to bring to you guys. Find your mentor, find your sponsor, ideally the two together, because that's what's going to take you further up. And you have seen it millions of times at work, right? When you ask the question, who the hell promoted this guy? Or how did he or she got the job? That's how. He or she had a sponsor, maybe not a mentor, who would develop and making sure, but meritocracy doesn't work. What, what works is nepotism. So find that relationship, but also make sure that you are good at your job because if you are not, you are punishing everybody around you and that's the worst thing. We don't want that. Bye.